Welcome, what am I up to today? Well, a showdown. Surreal collage techniques, digital versus traditional. Let's get into it. Okay, first up, digital, using Procreate on the iPad. Starting point is I need a photograph. So I've had my eye on this telephone box that I'm gonna use for the basis of my surreal idea. So photographed it, now I'm gonna copy it from my camera roll on the iPad, create a new canvas, quite a big one, 3000 by 4000, three finger swipe down, and that will paste in as a new layer. So I've been and photographed it. First thing I wanna do is just get rid of this background. So I'm gonna resize it on the canvas, and I'm just gonna use a rubber to start with, a nice hard edge, solid rubber, top one on my brush stack, and just get rid of most of it. Okay, before getting a bit closer to the edges. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to use it. First, using the selection tool. Set on freehand. I can now draw very precisely the exact shape I want to select. So there you can see I'm going up the straight edge, looping around, tapping out on the little dot. Now I can use my rubber and rub that selection straight out. Now that technique is good for some fiddly little areas, but this, you know, this is quite a simple shape to cut out. So I can just use the eraser and um, set again on a nice hard edge solid um, eraser. I can very quickly work my way around that image. Okay, moving on. I've got my telephone box isolated. I'm gonna create a new layer above my telephone box. So this is the one I'm gonna draw in. Now my idea, my concept is to try and get a kind of blobby mass spilling out from the inside through the windows. So first thing I need to do is in that new layer, select a color, I'm gonna go for a sort of turquoisey blue and using a 6B pencil, a Narinda pencil, something from the sketching palette, I'm gonna kind of start sketching my shapes. So I'm imagining a kind of bubbly, blobby mass. Okay, you'll see how that shape develops. An obvious early advantage with digital <laughs> is I've got all the scope I need to very quickly rub out, remove a layer, try new things very quickly. Okay, you can see there the form of my blobby shape. I'm starting to sketch it, getting these kind of separate little blobs as they would emerge from each side or face of the, the telephone box, trying to work out a little bit of depth in those shapes as well. Okay, pretty pleased with how this is looking. I'm just gonna sketch in lightly some color just to get a feel for how these shapes look. Okay, next step, get some more solid color in these shapes. So I'm using, again, the freehand selection tool. Remember we used it, looked at it before for isolating areas of the background. This time I'm using it to use that sketch, you know, that underdrawing, if you like. I'm just outlining now with that freehand selection tool, my individual kind of areas of blob. All right, so again, going around, as you can see there, tapping out, and then I'm gonna go back to my brush, a nice, solid brush, fill that area. Good way to get a kind of area of color blocked in. Okay, with that more solid brush, I'm now just going to tidy up a few areas, you know, my underdraw in there, my initial sketch, it's got a kind of very furry kind of loose edge to it, just because it was a sketching tool, 6B pencil I think I used, so I'm just going to tidy up some of those edges with that more solid brush, before I start moving on to kind of rendering, shading, working out where my shadows and highlights are. Now from shadows and highlights, I wanna use a sketching tool again, but I don't want it to spill over my clean edges. So great tip, use the selection tool, but set to automatic. I've now clicked within my blob, it's highlighted it as you can see, 
back to my brush now when I use a more kind of sketchy textured kind of um, drawing tool I can safely sketch over this blob shape and not risk going over the edges so I've selected the um, a slightly darker version of my blob colour and now I'm going to go in and start building up some shadow areas to try and give my blobs a bit more form. Okay, you can see where I'm up to. Now I want to use the light, the source of light, the direction of light that's fallen on the telephone box to kind of guide me through my highlights and shadows on the blob. So as shown with the arrow, the light's coming in from the right hand side. So I'm gonna start thinking about highlights now. Again, I've gone back into my color picker and just used a slightly lighter version of my base kind of turquoisey greeny blue color and I'm just starting to build up again with the 6B pencil not very high on a face E building up some highlights okay when I zoom out you can see it's starting to get a bit more form I need a bit more depth in those shadows just to kind of compete with the, the shadow on the telephone box so going a little darker I'm going to move around my color wheel there and get a bit more blue in it and go a bit darker as well within the, the color picker. Lower pace E, 6B pencil again. Being careful not to go over my edges too much. A bit darker again and work a bit more depth into the darkest parts of these shadows. Okay, so I've added some depth to those shadows. I'm going to go to the highlights. Now, on the telephone box, it's quite early in the morning when I took this photo, there's some quite nice pinkish light falling off or bouncing off this object. So I'm going to use that pink, colour picked it just by pressing on the colour, then going lighter, and I'm going to drop some pink into the highlights of these, um, of my blobs. Um, again, using fairly low pace E6B pencil, and I'm not overcooking this, so I'm trying not to. This is just to get harmonize the picture, bring it all together a bit. Um, and obviously pink and greeny blues look quite good together as well. Next step, just to soften some of these textures. So I'm gonna use the smudge tool, and I've got a few options, but I'm gonna go with Bonobo Chalk from the Sketching palette. And again, set on quite low opacity, not too big on the brush size. I'm just gonna see what effect this has, just softening some of these highlights, base tone, base color, and, and shadow colors. Just what effect that has. Will it actually help? Just soften everything a little bit. And you can see there, I'm not making major adjustments. It's just taking some of the grain out of, particularly my shadow areas. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I could probably now I've softened that with the smudge tool, keep building more and more depth and highlight. But we've got another technique to look at and compare with this. All up, I really enjoyed that. Um, we'll compare at the end. Right, traditional techniques. So here's my outcome, starting with the outcome, just to show you I needed to find, and of course you'll need to find your starting point. So my advice is always have your eyes open, you know, magazines, newspapers, there's always possibilities. Now I found this little spaceman, didn't know what I was going to do with it, but knew I wanted to do something with it at some point. This video gave me perfect opportunity. So here I am cutting him out. Whilst I'm cutting him out, I'm thinking of ideas. Um, I'm going to isolate him onto just a white page so then I can draw into that white page. Um, 
I'm thinking I could do stuff with the background, but actually it would be quite good to have a form interacting with the actual character, the little spaceman. So I'm thinking maybe something around the head or the visor. So ideas, what could I do? Well, I don't know. Let's get the little collage piece to see if it gives any inspiration. Definitely want to work with the head. So if I remove that visor, I could have things floating out of it. It could be a flock of birds or butterflies, or it could be like a, a weird sort of splashy liquid form. That could look quite good. Um, so here I am sketching it out next to the head just to see how it might work in terms of shapes interacting with each other. Obviously, if I removed the visor, then I could draw that splash going right into the head. So that's now given me an idea of maybe tentacles have some sort of alien creature or um, tentacled being um, that's consumed this um, astronaut or is wearing the spacesuit. I don't know. This is surreal. It's meant to be fantastic, impossible, but we're going to try and draw it in a way, present it in a way where it's kind of believable. Uh, believable. Um, so there we go. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm into this idea. I know it will work if I remove that visor, which I think I'm going to do now. Um, it's definitely going to be a, a winner. So, <clears throat> excuse me, get me knife, get rid of that visor. Could do it with scissors, but my knife's at hand. And then I'm going to place that collage piece onto a white page and start my more final drawing. Okay, here's my sketchbook page. Let's get in placed. And let's start my basic sketch. So I just want to position him down near the bottom right because I want plenty of space for my tentacles to grow into. And without sticking my collage piece down, because um, I might want to remove him, get him out of the way to make it easier to draw once I've got my basic shapes done. Um, here we go, sketching my tentacle shapes on now. And you can see it's developing nicely. I've got a few overlapping shapes there that I'm going to have to kind of tidy up with a rubber. Um, just make a little bit clearer before I start adding my base layer of shading. Now I'm going to be using colouring pencils for this. So I'm going to put a base layer down once I've just tidied it up with a rubber. Um, I'm going to put a base layer of HB pencil down and that's going to sit underneath my colouring pencil and give me some nice depth to my shadows. So that's my next um, step. I just tidy up a few of these outlines so I know where I'm going and I'm ready almost to start shading. So off I go. I'm just doing really simple to start with. I'm gonna shade either side of each tentacle to make it look a little more tubular. And um, obviously where they overlap a lot, I'm gonna add a bit more shading. Where they're coming out of the helmet, I'm gonna add a bit more shading and have some highlights on the more outer edges, if you see what I mean. So looking good, ready to get my color. And oh, first, I'm just gonna cut my little slit in there because I'm gonna wanna poke the very, like the visor part of my helmet um, into that slot. So it kind of hides behind, a very clever trick. There we go. And you'll see that, that saves me cutting my collage piece down to the exact size just a quick trick all right so now i'm off i'm ready to start adding my coloring pencil i've decided to use blue because there's some blue reflections in the actual picture in the spacesuit and i think blues and oranges and yellows look good together complementary hot and cold colors so i'm just going to keep my color scheme nice and simple all right i think i'll just skip through this next bit you can watch me build up my tones. You can see how my colouring pencil is really sitting underneath that colouring. Sorry, my HB pencil is sitting underneath my colouring pencil work nicely to give me a bit of depth in those shadows. Don't want to overcook the HB though. Because you still want your colours to be nice and fresh. So there we go. Looking good. I think I'm going to try and find a grey colouring pencil as well actually and just add a tiny bit more, a bit more depth to some of those darkest areas. But I want to see how that looks with my collage piece first. So 
So I'll just pop that back in in a minute and, and have a look. So there we go, pressing a bit heavier with that colouring pencil. Tidying it up, let's have a look. And now I'm going in with my dark grey colouring pencil. Yeah, and that's looking good. Now I'm going to stick him down because I'm happy with that. I'm still going to tidy up a bit of the colouring inside there. Perfect. I'm liking that very much. In terms of a comparison, well, of course, I love the traditional techniques because it takes me back to being a kid. It's the sort of thing I used to do, grew up doing. Digital, you know, fantastic the options and the scope for moving on. You know, look, look at this one. It took me about three or four minutes. A couple of layers changes, background colour change, a bit of a glow. And you can transform your image so quickly and open up new opportunities. Okay, look, hope you enjoyed it. Both approaches really push your imagination, give you a problem to solve, and that's the most fun part of creative making. Bye for now, see you soon.